And we're back. Welcome to the behind the scenes of FF9. We already started a behind the scenes earlier, and we, of course, had technical difficulties. Yeah. Which is precisely why we didn't have behind the scenes for last week's episode. And I do want to say I'm sorry for that. But uh, I was able to do the whole episode naked because of it. So Yeah, it was, yeah. It was fortunate. Fortunate yeah. for me. I felt, I felt really good. <laughs> All he right. Felt, he felt right. So, uh, for you behind the scenes folks, I'm going to just, this is kind of a taste and a test of uh, what we could possibly do with the equipment that I have. Um, now, I did say that, what was our goal on Patreon? $75? Uh, 75 was for the phone thing. It's like... It's like 100 Yeah. Okay. Okay, if we, we're at like 54 right now, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. So currently we're in the $50 range for our Patreon. Uh, for you YouTube-only uh, listeners slash viewers, um, you can go to our Patreon account, just look up Ultima Final Fantasy, you'll be able to find it. Uh, and there, there is a $100, um, the, the thing that we'll do if we get $100 uh, per month for our show, and we do run a weekly show, sometimes with extra episodes, uh, is that we will, instead of having standard def behind the scenes videos, this is a standard def video, believe it or not, this camera can do much better than this. Um, We'll have high definition video. In other words, I'll get a much better memory card, with mm -hmm. a much bigger capacity, and you'll be able to see every flaw. That's on true. Us. That's true. Every single flaw on our face. Anyway, <laughs> um, I I'm planning on making a movie in the next couple months, so I have this. I got this whole rig with my tax return, so <laughs> we're testing it out. That's that's part of the test. The other test is for you guys. This is still standard definition, but it can get a lot better looking than this. Yeah. So, if you guys would uh, go over to our Patreon and just help support us, that'd be great. Anyway, um, I got a couple soft boxes for lights. I got a new tripod with a, uh, a fluid head, which is very important. Uh, I got a shoulder rig for the camera, mat box, external microphone, which, you'll, which we're testing for the first time today, a 7-inch monitor, which I'm looking at right now, uh, and then, of course, I have my Canon camera. Um, so, as far as equipment breakdown for the video, that's that's what you're getting in this behind the scenes. Yep. We're also doing something new with the audio for you podcast listeners who decided that behind the scenes is kind of the way to go. Um, instead of recording on my computer, which has a very, very loud fan, um, which we've been having to record on for the entire time, I got this, uh, this little device right here. This is called a Zoom H1. It's a digital audio recorder that we can take these two dynamic microphones in, put them through a splitter, put that splitter through a um, adapter, and then plug that adapter right in, and it becomes uh, a fantastic little way of uh, recording our episodes. You can actually use the Zoom H1 as a as a microphone itself. Yeah, it has it's actually a pretty good one, but it makes a lot of noise because you're moving it around. But you know, you can get like a little tripod for it and such. We might even try it one day, but for now, we're we're really happy with these. Things. One thing that would be cool is if we ever did another convention of sorts. That little bastard right there would be awesome for like if we were able. Oh to yeah, to record. But, yeah, stuff. yeah. Well, that's also that little microphone on top of the camera. We can use that too if it, if it's any good. Who knows? We'll find out when if, I plug uh, it into the computer. If some of the the heads at the company are having like a conversation off to the side. You can just like, <laughs> just it's true, it right? It's, it super, it it's, it's supposed to be a super directional mic. It's like a Chinese knockoff of the uh, Rode microphone, which a lot of DSLR filmmakers use. And uh, yeah, you're supposed to be able to, like from like 50 yards away. You're supposed to be able to pick up sound in a very directional place. So yeah. I'm gonna use it to spy on my neighbors uh, personally, so uh, I get to hear their sex sounds. Nice. Not that I don't get to hear Cody's enough. <laughs> God. Oh, also, Cody's girlfriend is coming in at one point, which might interrupt the uh, behind-the-scenes episode. Uh, might interrupt the real episode, which will be fucking annoying. Okay, so we got story graphics, or story, game. we're going to do story first, gameplay. So as far as story, we'll do what we've been doing for the last two. People seem to really like us going through the games in detail. Yeah. I know you hate it. No, I don't hate it, I just hate this. It would be better if it was 
in the like pictures? A, no, if it's like <laughs> you did this in this part as opposed to just the names, I'm like, oh yeah, I totally remember every name of every area and well, every. No, if you don't remember, Final Fantasy. Name, don't worry about it. I don't remember all these like little chapter names. This is just the IGN chapter names. Condi Petit. Isn't that the uh, the fucking? What are you looking at? Oh, Condi Petit here. Yeah, that's the summoner place, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Dude, we need. No, to that might be Main Dane. Sorry. Uh, I can't. Do you remember. got your phone on you? Mine's dead. Yours is always dead. You don't plug it in every night. No, I forget. NBC anchor Brian Williams says he is taking himself off air for the next several days. Why is that a CNN headline? Oh, uh, he's taking a few days off. <laughs> Who cares? I mean, unless it's like for something. Like, it was like, I'm taking a few days off for my throat cancer. Well, that'd be like something. Yeah. The fuck? <laughs> or if he went to like Fox or something for two days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had like a bring your enemy to work day. <laughs> yeah, nothing like NBC and, uh, and Fox getting together. Yeah. Okay. Settlement of the Dwarven race. That's Oh, that's right. Condé Petit was the, the dwarf. Okay. Condé Petit. So that means Mandane Suri is the summoner's place. You got problems with any of the other ones? Mm. You know Alexandria, Evil Forest. Well, Alexandria is the beginning. You of the just kind of walk through the ice cavern. No, no, because there's the black, there's the, the black walls. The vaults. Village of Dali is before you get on the airship and then hit another black waltz. <laughs> yeah, with the people, the one. Lindblum lady. is Sid's uh, Sid's place, right? Um. Gizmaluk's grotto is where you get. Is it the swamp, right? It's near the swamp. Yeah. The grotto is the mountain. Yeah. There. And then uh, Bermesia is the place where all the foxes live. No, not all the foxes, but like that rainy place. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. It's just difficult sometimes to remember all the names. Well, this is why we're doing really this before we start the episode. I don't really care about. This has been the same outline for all of our stuff. Uh, all of our uh, big episodes. These um, these are game review episodes. You'll see right here. I'm not sure. Actually, you won't see right here. But, uh, you know... We've been doing making of first, and then we'll probably stop the recording, and then do we'll talk about story, stop the recording, um, gameplay, stop, graphics slash design, then we talk about music, and then we talk about the legacy of the game, and then our overall opinions on the game and how it fits with the rest of Final Fantasy, and then we'll and, move on to the question segment. And how it ranks. And how it ranks. It ranks like a dirty, dirty whore. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, well. Okay. Fuck. I guess we can get started. Let's do it. And, uh, Caleb, you gotta let me know, if, and I'll let you know, if that thing ever stops behind the scenes. How will we know? It won't I look like that? I don't know. I'm don't sure know. it won't look like that. You see the little... Yeah, the sound? Oh. That's how we know the sound is on. I thought the... Fuck. I thought that was like a little meter for how far into the recording. Well, the 188 point something, you see that? That might be the amount of minutes we have. I think it is. I was looking at that earlier, but sometimes it doesn't really want to... That's a long time. Okay. That's well, like three okay. hours. So okay. we well, we have 34 hours that we can record on the Zoom H1. Man, we could do our entire lives. Talking to that mic. Talking in. Talking in. Mic. Talking in. Who's intro? <laughs> it's you. Is it me? Welcome to another episode of... Ultima Final Fantasy. The... Ultimate... Final Fantasy Podcast. I am Joe. And I am Caleb. And today... You know what we're going to be talking about today, and probably next week, if we split this episode like we have in the last two? Um, Final Fantasy... N Wait, nine? 
Yes, no, Final no, Fantasy Nine. You finished it, right? Oh yeah, I finished okay. it. Okay, I, I did too. You were in the room. I was in the room. I was just messing with you, so man. So technically, I have to question you. Maybe you just went home and were like, hmm, hmm. I could beat it, or I could just watch it. Yeah, we actually... Well, I gave myself... Okay, how do I, how do I say this? We usually give ourselves a month to finish these games, at least one through nine we have. And then it usually turned into something else. It was like yeah. a, a month and a week, or a month and two months, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> a month and four weeks. Uh, and, you know, certain life issues would get in the way of that, but since I'm not in school this semester, boy, and you're right. I don't have a sick, sick job anymore. And, yeah, and he doesn't have a sick job anymore. I, yeah, it is more appropriate to get something, a, a, a smaller Final Fantasy, like Final Fantasy IX, not a 45-hour game, uh, by the way, for amusers. Yeah, <laughs> it's sorry, guys. It's a fucking lie. There's no way, there's... Only you can get everything done in forty-five hours in that game. I'm Probably, sure. yeah. It's, a, it's kind of a smaller Final Fantasy as far as what you can do. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we finished it around thirty-two, thirty-three hours, both yeah. of us. I think mine was thirty-two something. My final save. Yeah, so was mine thirty-two something. Nice. Yeah, so uh, the forty-five hour thing is just bullshit. Anyway, we gave ourselves a month to finish it, and we actually did it. I had to, because I'm kind of organized in, in a certain fashion. I had to kind of. You know, say that I would get done with a disc every week. Mm. and um, We can't do that anymore, though. Can't do that anymore. Unless we play 13 on, you know, an Xbox 360 that doesn't have any storage That's true, space guess, on the yeah. discs. One yeah. month per disc? <laughs> oh, no. no. I mean, I think it's two discs, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't, have a, I don't have a 360. It's two or three discs. I'm not sure. And it's more compressed, so the image isn't as good. I know. You dirty, Xbox users. Dirty bastards. <laughs> anyway, um, Final Fantasy X is more of a 50-hour game, at least in my experience it is. Mm -hmm. Caleb has a sick save where you got sent at, like, what, 26 hours or something like that? Uh, it's 31. Oh, 31. Still sick. It's pretty fast. Um, it's because the main Final Fantasy games are going to get so much bigger from this game on, we're looking at more like two months. Yeah, for I mean, Final Fantasy. I'll probably get them done faster. And I'm gonna but... try really hard to to get to those places in, in certain times. So if if you go to our forums, I put down uh, in case you're playing along with us on Final Fantasy X thing, uh, which is my plan for beating certain, like getting to certain parts of the games each week. Yeah. So you can follow that if you want, and uh, I'm gonna try to follow it really hard. I I had a little trouble with disc three this this time, like my disc three time uh, went over into my fourth week. <laughs> it was a really long disc, so and it's yeah, fine. it was a really long disc, and I was I don't know, I was having money problems, so I had to take up a couple extra days of work mm. um, that I wasn't scheduled, and so I could make a little bit more money. <laughs> Took over some other people's shifts. Awesome. Yep. So, uh, so that happens. Anyway, so if you're playing along with uh, Final Fantasy X, it should be done by, what was it, April? February, March? Yeah, April 11th? Yeah, it's something like that. It's something like that. exactly two months. And like no, it's, it's nine weeks. Nine weeks, is what yeah. Because we exactly two months from now is like the middle of the week. So we just Nine it weeks from February 7th. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, so if you want to play along with us... That's what you need to do. Yeah, and we're both going to be playing the uh, 10, 10.2 remake on PS3. So. Yeah. Well, not 10.2. No, no, well, we will play 10.2 on there, too, I'm sure. At some point. <laughs> but uh, I will. the only reason I'm going to, one, is for the trophies, and two, I am curious to see how it looks in high So I've never really looked. It also has the Dark Aeons. That's true. It's the international version, which I am always jealous of. <laughs> I don't know why they change things over to like bring over here. There's like no reason. They just don't want no non-racist reason to change things. Yeah, <laughs> it's not our fault, man. You guys wouldn't back down. It's like they lowered the difficulty level for Final Fantasy IV uh, because they thought we couldn't handle it. Really? Yeah. Bullshit. Was that was in the Super NES era, so that was Final Fantasy II. Mm. Yeah. Of course, the real thing is kind of bullshit when you get to the moon. Yeah. It is pretty hard. It's, <laughs> it's really sick. Yeah, at least, the, like, the gap. I guess if you've been, like, leveling up like crazy, yeah. maybe not. Okay, so, 
Oh, also, I gotta tell you guys, uh, we're not gonna treat this like a regular episode. We do have new iTunes reviews. We're gonna save those for our next uh, non-review episode. Um, could be next week, could be the week after, uh, depending on how long this one is. I mean, we've been splitting the last few episodes. That's been good for us, and uh, it's been good for you guys, too, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. And so we're gonna keep doing that. Um, so we didn't in case about this episode, you. in case this episode hits the three hour mark, if it's below the three hour mark, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, also final. So yeah, we're going to skip reviews. We're going to skip, uh, what else do we usually skip? Oh, we're going to skip news and, uh, there's not that much news anyway. I guess final fantasy 15 has got awesome graphics. Yep. <laughs> That's about it. Obviously. It's <laughs> about the only news there is. And, uh, hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, Final Fantasy XI. Uh, after we beat Final Fantasy X, uh, we are open to users of our forums and listeners to our show and our YouTube watchers uh, to come join us to play Final Fantasy XI, the Bastok Missions. Yep. Uh, and we're going to be on every night at a specified time, most likely 9pm, but we'll have more information when we get closer to that, but I am going to remind you guys of this every single episode up until then, so that yeah. we have some people playing with us. And who knows? I mean, if you guys help us move through the story faster, we could maybe get to twelve faster. It all depends. Yeah, I guess it does all. Depend. The more help we have, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Caleb, let's get to our review. All right. Fancy. It is fancy. Got to make sure that it recorded. Okay. Okay, so it does work. Well, that's good. <laughs> Had to make sure. Okay, so you just press halfway down on the recorder thing. Do you wanna? How do you wanna break this up? Do you want me to go over the, the making of? Oh, we're doing the making of first. That's we right. always do the making of first. No? You know so we're doing? not doing the red section. No. Okay. I don't care about that. It's like it's just okay. Okay. Every time there's a quote, we should switch over to the other person. Just in general, we'll okay. wing it though. We're always a, we're always pretty good at that because of the fan fiction. Do you want to start it up? Um, Seems it's your word. Right up, my right up. Sure. Copy paste. Just kidding. <laughs> They're quotes, you I'm ass. I'm kidding. I didn't use quotes. I know. That's why yours are less in depth. How is this in depth? This is in depth. We're not Three? using a page and a half of it. Well, do you want to? No. Okay. I want it to be up. as lacking in depth as it is. Or at least content. This has more information on it than the Wikipedia page. Well, the Wikipedia page is always lame. You have to cross it. Which I did discover after you told me to look at both. <laughs> you always gotta look at the Final Fantasy wiki and the regular wiki. Yeah. Find the truth. <laughs> if they both say it's so, then it's so. Then, then we're good. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? Okay. Final Fantasy IX began development shortly before the release of Final Fantasy VIII. A small glimpse into the early process of the game was revealed on the early net by early <laughs> was on the early net on the internet by Sakaguchi in 2010 on Mistwalker's blog, which is Sakaguchi's company. Uh, Sakaguchi posted early notes for the opening of Final Fantasy IX, and although the blog post is now impossible to find, I know this, I had to look for the freaking thing, uh, an amateur translation was jotted down in a forum deep, deep inside the internet. Uh, and I, I want you guys to kind of listen to this. This is probably the biggest glimpse we'll ever get into the process of the making of any of these games. And we do have two entries. There's one for, uh, for movie number one, that Sakaguchi was planning, which you guys can read in our show notes. It's just too long for us to read right now. And then we got one for uh, Sakaguchi notes for movie number four. That's what it says here. 
And uh, you can kind of you kind of get into the mind of Sakaguchi a little bit here. Yeah. I, I, I want you guys to hear this. Caleb, could you uh, could you explain these notes? Yeah. So, close up of Princess Garnett. Close up of her breasts. <laughs> view of her breasts inside the clothes. A little. Also a view of her pendant royalty. Oh yeah. Also that. Yeah. That's because that's <laughs> what we were looking at here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you people. <laughs> hallway. She rushes away from the hallway. Two stare at each other. So obviously one is Zidane, the other one's Thief. Zidane. Hey, what's that? Thief. Her breasts look comfortable. Zidane. No, no. She was wearing the pendant of the summons, permitted by only royalty. Thief. I fell in love at first sight. <laughs> Zidane. Deep blue stone. The legend of Leviathan. Was it Princess Garnett? Thief. What are you talking about? Zidane. Never mind. Change of plan. Let's follow after her. <laughs> Final Fantasy IX would be the last Final Fantasy on the PlayStation, and as the series planned to move on to the next generation, it was IX that was left to fittingly end the single-digit series of Final Fantasy games. So I want you to guys... Did you guys hear those notes? I mean, you were going to go on to the next paragraph that I got written here, and that's fine. Um, but... <laughs> Obviously, some stuff has changed since Sakaguchi did these notes and uh, what we finally got in the uh, in Final Fantasy IX. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting that he got rid of the underage girl. <laughs> uh, the, the, how should I say this? The sexualization of the under, underage girl. Because uh, Princess Garnetta, I believe, is 16, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so like we that. can blame Sakaguchi on the creepy factor here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sakaguchi. All right, so... On, on what you were saying there about Final Fantasy IX being the, the end of the single-digit Final Fantasy games, here's a little excerpt from uh, Fumatsu Inernu uh, with the Gooch, of course. Uh, Famitsu, I should say. Sakaguchi. I was thinking of it as an end. FF10 and FF11 are going to be on PS2 as well as play online. So with those, we were wanting to concentrate less on the feel of a world, but more to use visuals, which would push the hardware's ability. In that sense, because FF9 is the third in the series on PlayStation, instead of making it by pushing the abilities of the present hardware, we thought of making the feel of a Final Fantasy world once more. Hmm. Interviewer. In the previous interview, it was explained that Final Fantasy was going back to its roots, and when you look at the logo, the crystal is there. Is there really, uh, like, is it really going to go back to the roots of the FF series, and, and why, why is that? Well, I wanted to try it out. Uh, I said I said that it was because... I didn't write that, Caleb. It just says laughs. Laughs, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I said that it was because it was the last single-numbered FF, but yes, I like the number nine. So he just likes the number nine. Yeah, he well, thinks of, of it as lucky. I think uh, he in that interview he references some kind of uh, gambling, Japanese gambling game. And mm. the number nine is like a lucky number. Uh, anyway... So, Sakaguchi actually served as producer of the game with uh, Shinji Hashimoto, so he was co-producer, and was the scenario writer for the send-off. Uh, it was not originally planned to be a mainline Final Fantasy game, and had been given the title of Final Fantasy Gaiden during conceptual stages of the game. Uh, it wasn't officially announced as Final Fantasy IX until late in 1999, when Final Fantasy IX, X, and XI were announced simultaneously. Wow. Oh. Yeah, so... <laughs> You know, you're hearing Sakaguchi calling it a send-off, and maybe they were planning on making a spin-off game that was a send-off to the series and then decided to make it, like, a legitimate Final Fantasy. Um, but we don't actually know the decision-making process in that. Yeah. So, as a return to the Final Fantasy, or to the fantasy genre that began the series, Final Fantasy IX may not seem like the natural sequel to FF6, 7, or 8, and why would it be? I mean, <laughs> none of them are really sequels. And they all do kind of build upon each other, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, usually they do. The most notable difference is, of course, the controversial design and look of the game. Anime, realism, and steampunk gave way to old castles and more of a western fantasy approach. Hiroyuki Ito stated that they pulled from Norse and Northern European mythology, and to cap off the retro feel, there were some nice deformed character models to match the pre-FF8 Final Fantasy games. So this is uh, from the art director, Hideo Minaba. 
Uh, as this is the last single digit Final Fantasy, we wanted to give the feeling of a series watershed, a sort of grand collection of what has come before. Uh, the old fantasy feel, this is not him talking anymore, this is me. <laughs> this old fantasy feel not only affected the look of the game, but also the soundtrack as scored by Nobu Uematsu, uh, who of course scored the previous eight games. Right. Right. Uh, he, says, uh, he says here, I was shooting for subtle, classical sounding tunes that fit the general setting and feel of this game. Uh, he states, although he did start to clear, start to steer clear of that feel. Um, this departure and boredom with the sound he was originally going for may have to do with the 160 tracks he recorded for the game. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, the game ended up using around 140, including some remixes of other FF soundtracks. did notice that. Yeah. Uematsu uh, talked about some of the other soundtracks here. Right. He also says he wanted to remix some of the older songs. Um, some of the character and location names were the same, so he thought it would be cool to use something from the past series. Yeah. Uh, so some staff for Final Fantasy IX were returning from other Final Fantasy games. However, as Yoshinori Kitase, the director of Seven VII and Eight, uh, was moving on to Final Fantasy X, the directing duties as well as battle design duties uh, were put onto the shoulders of Hiroyuki Ito, who of course created the battle system mm -hmm. for all the previous games, I believe. Right. Uh, maybe not all of them, but he created Active Time and he created... Uh, the junction system, and I believe the material system. Is that correct? Yeah, he, he designed the battle okay. systems. I'm trying to remember what we all that research we did on, on that class, or all the research you did on the, on here. You he developed all of them, though. Okay, that's cool. All right. So Ito took much of the staff from Final Fantasy Tactics to work on the game, uh, and as the game was mostly created in Hawaii, possibly due to Sakaguchi's involvement on both Final Fantasy IX and Spirits Within, uh, many of the staff members were not Japanese. Yet another reason the game, well, yet another probable or possible reason the game has more of a Western sensibility to it. Yeah. Because they had Westerners working on the game. True. Um, now, this is kind of something I heard from an episode of a podcast called My Favorite Game. And they had this guest, her name Alex Donaldson, who's some kind of critic or something like that. And he's like a super fan of Final Fantasy IX. And he was talking about how this is about the point in the series in which there became, like, two main Final Fantasy teams, like the creators of the games. And that they usually kind of switch off. So he was talking about how you could see kind of the same team going from 7, 8, and 10, and 13. But then uh, Hiroyuki Ito's team would go from, like, 9 and 12, and, and now 16, possibly. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. all the rumors are saying. Um... So that's kind of where this started. They, it's mostly like a large chunk of the team is coming from Final Fantasy Tactics. Some are coming on from Seven VII and Eight, um, but yeah, it's like this whole amalgamation of of these of a different kind of team moving in to do a Final Fantasy. Yet a send off to all the old <laughs> Final Fantasy games. Right. Right. So I, I just think that that's interesting. Right. So I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people take umbrage in the speed of the battle system of Final Fantasy IX. Uh, at one time, designed to be the fastest battle system in the series is really interesting, yet turned out to be the slowest, Yep. especially after eight. <laughs> and this is, uh, the reason for this, apparently, this, of course, this I got this also from that podcast from Alex Donaldson, uh, was that the system couldn't handle the battle system, like the the PlayStation, couldn't handle it in their in their early builds of the game, mm. and the frame rate uh, wouldn't be acceptable at the speed that they wanted to do it in. And uh, here's what Sakaguchi said. Uh, he said, "With the speed down, the game almost feels like it's turn based." So they they had this super slow battle speed, and then they were like, "Okay with it," and that was their justification. Uh, you know, it kind of feels like turn-based if you yeah. if you pull down the active time battle speed to ridiculously slow amounts. Except it's not. <laughs> it's not. And I, I put a little caveat here. You'll see in the show notes it says personally, I think he's talking out of his ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, the final the battle against you know Kuja at the very end of the game definitely shows that where he spams his oh, spell. God. That's not a fucking turn-based system. I'm sorry. It would be him, and then my turn. Not his turn, his turn, his turn, and then whoever's left. No, that's not necessarily true. It depends on their speed, is how many turns they get. True, but... Do you remember this? I remember it in ten. <laughs> there were only, there's only like four Final Fantasy games that are truly turn-based, so... Yeah. Yeah. But I hate it. 
So, despite the slow system, which we'll talk about plenty in this episode, Final Fantasy IX was still a success. Um, here's a little bit of history about its release, though.